This is the result of the tortoise and the hare race. While Blue Origin experienced up to 10 delays, SpaceX continues to make achievements. Most recently, Elon's company made not one, but two simultaneous marks with just one rocket completely humiliating the Blue Feather Company. Hint, it's not Starship. So, how did they do it? Well, the only way to find out is by joining me on today's journey. So, without further ado, let's dive in. We all know that Jeff Bezos has a passion for the moon, which was one of the biggest motivations for him to found Blue Origin. Ironically, SpaceX once again seems to be one step ahead in making its impact on the planet. Today, January 15th, SpaceX's Falcon 9 launched Firefly Aerospace's Blue Ghost mission 1 to the Moon from Launch Complex 39A in Florida. Firefly's first Blue Ghost mission, with a catchy name, Ghost Riders in the Sky, delivers 10 science and technology instruments to the lunar surface as part of NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services CLPS, initiative. Blue Ghost is a class of lunar landers designed and manufactured by Firefly Aerospace. It is equipped with four landing legs, communication, heating, and solar power systems, along with several layers of insulation. The solar panels, supplied by Solero, a subsidiary of Rocket Lab, deliver up to 650 watts of power. ASI, also part of Rocket Lab, contributes flight, ground, and GNNC software, as well as trajectory design, orbit determination, and integration of the software testbed. Once deployed into a highly elliptical Earth orbit, the Blue Ghost lander embarks on an approximately 45-day journey to the Moon, ultimately landing in Mare Crisium. There, it will facilitate NASA's payloads, carrying out a series of groundbreaking science and technology demonstrations. These include lunar subsurface drilling, sample collection, and X-ray imaging of Earth's magnetic field, all aimed at advancing research for future human missions on the Moon and deepening our understanding of how space weather affects Earth. This mission is an important foundation in establishing a long-term base for humans to live and research on the Moon. And SpaceX's role this time is extremely important to the success of that vision. Also aboard the mission is ISPACE's Resilience Lunar Lander. The Resilience Lander stands 2.5 by 2.3 meters and weighs 340 kilograms. The lander includes a micro-rover planned to perform an ISRU demonstration. Following its deployment, the ISPACE's Resilience Lander begins its four- to five-month journey to the Moon. During the mission, ISPACE intends to achieve a soft landing on the lunar surface, deploy its tenacious micro-rover, explore the Moon's surface, and gather valuable regolith samples for further analysis. According to SpaceX, these landers are designed to provide insights into the lunar surface environment and the ability to test technologies. The missions launched as part of this program are the precursors to landing Artemis astronauts safely on the Moon with Starship's Human Landing System, or HLS. After stage separation, the booster will land on the Just Read the Instructions drone ship, which is stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. This is the fifth flight for the first stage booster supporting this mission, and SpaceX's third launch to a lunar surface, and just the first of several our Falcon fleet will launch for NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services CLPS, program this year. However, this is not the only feat SpaceX achieved this week. SpaceX is consistently advancing its flight cadence, as demonstrated by the series of consecutive launches scheduled since the start of the week. Right on Monday this week at 11.47 a.m. Eastern Time, Falcon 9 launched 21 Starlink satellites, including 13 with direct-to-cell capabilities, to low Earth orbit from Space Launch Complex, 40, SLC-40, at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida. Following stage separation, the first stage landed on the A shortfall of Gravitas drone ship, which is stationed in the Atlantic Ocean. This marked the 15th flight for the first stage booster supporting this mission, which has previously launched AX-2, AX-3, 
CRS-30, SES-24, NG-21, Euclid, and nine Starlink missions. On Tuesday, January 14, Falcon 9 performs its Transporter 12 mission to low Earth orbit from Space Launch Complex 4E at Vandenberg Space Force Base in California. Transporter 12 is a dedicated SmallSat rideshare mission, carrying 131 payloads, including CubeSats, MicroSats, and orbital transfer vehicles, which deliver 30 of those payloads, 14 of which will be deployed at a later time. To date, SpaceX has launched over 1,100 payloads to orbit for more than 130 customers through its rideshare program. This is the second flight for the first stage booster supporting this mission, which previously launched NROL-126. Following stage separation, Falcon 9 landed on Landing Zone 4 at Vandenberg Space Force Base. And of course, the Starship's seventh test flight might be happening today. To be honest, there was a brief moment when we anticipated Blue Origin's New Glenn would launch ahead of Flight 7, but it seemed like the tables had turned. Starship 5-2 is set to make its first debut and will bring along a host of innovative improvements. The most notable improvement in this version is its increased height compared to the previous iteration. To accommodate the additional weight, the Starship Super Heavy's propulsion system has been significantly enhanced. Key upgrades include a 25% increase in propellant volume, vacuum jacketing for the feed lines, a redesigned fuel feed line system tailored for the Raptor vacuum engines, and an advanced propulsion avionics module that optimizes vehicle valve control and sensor data processing. Building on lessons learned from previous flights, where forward flaps caught fire during re-entry, the vehicle's forward flaps have been downsized and repositioned closer to the vehicle's tip, away from the heat shield. This adjustment greatly reduces their exposure to the intense heat during re-entry. This also reduces the complexity of heat shield design in this area. This is an improvement that Elon Musk has long envisioned, and it is finally becoming a reality. Another notable feature is the installation of landing gear designed to secure the launch tower during descent to the Mechazilla. However, SpaceX has made it clear that for this flight, Starship will again perform a splashdown in the sea, meaning the landing gear won't be used. Instead, the part is still equipped with a heat shield to test its re-entry endurance. It's a bit of a disappointment, as although the image of a Mechazilla holding a pair of chopsticks has been featured on this vehicle, we'll have to wait for the next flight to see the Starship upper stage captured by the Mechazilla. The ship's heat shield also undergoes significant upgrades. In addition to the latest generation of tiles, which include a backup layer to safeguard against missing or damaged tiles, this flight will also feature a new metallic tile with active cooling. This innovative tile will be tested to assess its effectiveness in enhancing the ship's thermal protection. On the contrary, SpaceX also wanted to test the resistance in vulnerable areas, so about 50 heat shields were intentionally removed from this vehicle. The vehicle's avionics have been completely redesigned, featuring a more powerful flight computer and integrated antennas that combine Starlink, GNSS, and backup RF communication functions in a single unit. This time, the passenger is no longer just a banana, it's a set of Starlink simulations. In preparation for the upcoming Starlink transport mission, 10 simulated Starlink will be deployed on the same suborbital trajectory as Starship offering a valuable test run for future operations. While the ship is in space, it will also perform a relight of a single Raptor engine. To ensure a smooth landing and flawless launch, hardware upgrades were made to the launch and catch tower. These enhancements will improve the reliability of booster recovery, including added protections for the sensors on the tower chopsticks. The seventh Starship flight test is preparing for launch as soon as Wednesday, January 15th if weather conditions allow. It will debut and test a range of new SpaceX technologies, while also evaluating Starship's endurance across multiple critical parts. Just like Elon always said before each flight, excitement is guaranteed. 
while SpaceX is making one triumph after another. Blue Origin, as usual, is the name left behind. To be fair, they have put in a considerable effort in the hope of beating their longtime rivals, New Glenn being the prime example. And we had some faith in that, but New Glenn, oh New Glenn, I used to have high hopes for you, but once again you broke my heart. This Blue Origin's first heavy lift launch vehicle is expected to compete with SpaceX's current market dominating Falcon series. Although it is a two-stage rocket like the Falcon 9, with nearly twice the diameter and a height of 98 meters, the New Glenn's power is closer to the Falcon Heavy. Just like the Falcon series, the New Glenn's first stage was designed to be reusable, landing on a barge called Landing Platform Vessel 1. With a cargo hold twice as large, New Glenn will surpass Falcon 9 in capacity. Because Blue Origin has always been the underdog in the race with SpaceX, when the company announced the launch date for New Glenn, I was all in, hoping to see a spectacular comeback of the tortoise catching up with the hare. However, things did not turn out as I expected. The launch window for New Glenn 1, NG1, was open from 1 a.m. to 4 a.m. Eastern Time Monday morning. Livestream viewers eagerly awaited the historic moment that would be witnessed in just a few hours. Initially, the event was scheduled for 1.31 a.m. Eastern Time, but as time passed, the expected start time slipped to 1.52 a.m. Eastern Time, a delay of over two hours. Well, this is not unusual for a rocket to launch for the first time, but then the clock is reset again, and again, and again, and again. Finally, as 3.15 a.m. Eastern Time approached, the countdown clock suddenly vanished from the webcast. Commentator Ariani Cornell then announced a scrub. We are standing down today's launch attempt to troubleshoot a vehicle subsystem issue that will take us beyond our launch window. We are reviewing opportunities for our next launch attempt. According to the company, the primary problem was likely ice clogging one of the vent lines that carry pressurized gas away from the vehicle. Several attempts were made to melt the ice, but they were unsuccessful, leading to the scrub. Blue Origin posted on X that the scrub was due to ice forming in a purge line on an auxiliary power unit that powers some of our hydraulic systems. Because of this, they announced that the next launch attempt is no earlier than Tuesday, January 14th, with the three-hour launch window remaining the same, opening at 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 0600 coordinated universal time. However, it looks like the weather in the Atlantic Ocean will get worse in the coming days, forcing the company to postpone the launch once again. The final launch schedule as of now is announced by Blue on X, stating, we're moving our NG-1 launch to no earlier than Thursday, January 16th. The three-hour launch window opens at 1 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 0600 UTC. So you're telling me there's a chance? Yes, even if it's later than expected, we'll still get to see New Glenn take to the skies. The NG-1 mission will carry our Blue Ring Pathfinder. This mission will mark the vehicle's first National Security Space Launch certification flight. Even though 2025 is just beginning, SpaceX's track record so far marks it as a breakout year for the company. Other companies like Blue Origin, while not as successful as Elon's company, have also been making slow but steady progress. After all, these are the companies that will be at the forefront of space exploration.